welcome, this is Mark from Arcade Flat Pack. In part one of our build your own Raspberry Pi based arcade machine, we looked at an overview of the components that would be required to build your mini arcade cabinet. In this part we're going to take a look at the wiring and walk you through how the components are connected together. We'll start by looking at power and as you can see in terms of the positive you can see that we need to take power from our 5 volt 1 amp power supply now typically I use a connector that's a round connector there with a positive center and that's often stated as a 2.1 connector in terms of size and off from there we have our positive connections so you don't have to wire it in this way, you just have to make sure you've got a positive connection to all the components shown with the red wire going to them. Now if we start off by taking a look at the amp, you can see our amp there. Amps are often marked VCC and VCC is where the power in should connect to the actual amplifier to amplify our sound. We should also have a negative wire or a common wire as it's often called connected to our amp. In terms of other components requiring power we need to run a positive to the input for the power on our driver board for our screen. As I've put there the centre pin is often uh, commonly the positive connection with the outer being negative. You could solder onto the back of this board once you've identified the pins you'll find the centre pin is the connector at the back if you flip the board over you'll see where it's connected and um, then if you have a look for the outer connection which is going to be your negative alternatively you can use the same kind of connector pin again which is a 2.1 as you can see here I've made a note that can just plug straight in there now you can buy these on eBay and you can solder your own wires to them it's not drawing a lot of current if you're using a 7 inch, a 9 inch or a 10 inch common screen found on eBay so don't worry about your wire thickness too much we also need to supply power to our Raspberry Pi so you can see here we're going to go in through our micro USB connection which is standard on a Raspberry Pi and we need both a positive and a negative so you'll need a wire that goes into there with a connector on the end and if you strip the wires back you'll easily be able to identify the positive it's normally red or pink or something like that with the negative being white or black once you have run your power to all the connections as shown we're ready to look further at our buttons and joysticks now the first thing I want to talk about is how the buttons and micro switches actually work we've got a common ground just like on an arcade machine that needs to run to each of the micro switches or each of the buttons if you've got inbuilt micro switches you can see here I've put a diagram on the bottom which shows the ground connection now you can actually have these the other way around it's just easier if you follow the same system so if you use the top connection on your micro switch as ground <coughs> excuse me and the second one down as the button connection which we'll come to in a minute you may have micro switches with only two connections in which case you're good to use either it doesn't matter which way around these connections are I just like to commonly go around using the top one for ground so you may or may not have three connection pins as you can see there start off by connecting from your Raspberry Pi on uh, pin number six you can see there and this is actually laid out in the order that the pins appear notice the pin numbers are not necessarily the same as the GPIO numbers so be careful not to mix those up so run a ground connection from pin 6 that you can see here on the Raspberry Pi and then run it, you can run it as a daisy chain to each of the micro switches on the buttons both the rear panel, the control panel the front panel and to each micro switch on your joystick now if you're using a Sanwar type joystick you might find that you've actually got a four pin connector there sorry a five pin connector there which has a separate pin 
for ground that could be marked common com or ground itself in that case for the joystick you'll only need one wire connection there if you're using the more common micro switch joysticks with all the micro switches wired separately again refer to the diagram in the bottom right and connect each one to ground so we're basically going to daisy chain a wire to each of the buttons and each of the micro switches on the joystick and back to ground on pin 6 now that's not to say that you couldn't use pin 34 that you can see here is also a ground pin 39 pin 9 or pin 14 or 20 they're all grounds they're all fine I just like to run one wire to reduce the amount of wiring needed let's now look at the actual buttons and the connections now many people think with the Raspberry Pi that they need to go for a USB encoder device to connect it like a joystick would traditionally be connected to a PC but that's not actually true the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi work absolutely fine with very minimal lag that I've ever noticed at all it just seems instant to me and we're going to connect them if you're using our image which we supply if you buy one of our kits we supply you with a link to download a pre-configured image to make the software configuration easy because we've already done it for you and we've also configured the emulators to work with the same keys as well and of course the volume up and down the front panel connections, the control panel connections and the actual joystick so you may choose different pins if you've not got one of our kits if you've got one of our kits if you contact me if you haven't already I can send you a link to actually download the Raspberry Pi image that we've pre-made for you to make this easy if you've got our image great that's not a problem what we now need to do is connect the remaining pins from each micro switch the ones marked as button wire uh, to the following GPIO pins now please note that these are GPIO connections these are not pin numbers okay so we're looking at for example 16 we're looking at this connection here which is marked 36 GPIO 16 we're looking at the GPIO connection number not at the pin number try very carefully not to get those mixed up so GPIO 16 is here for example for the F button 21 if you hunt around and they're not actually in order 21 you can find here which is pin 40 make sure you're connecting the remaining one of these connections to an individual pin so each of the micro switches the remaining wire from each one will be required to connect directly to a GPIO pin independently what we then have within our software image is the pre-configured section to recognize that as a key press to then work with our front end and then to work with the actual emulators themselves that have been configured to specific keys we then map those keys to the GPIO pins and effectively the Raspberry Pi thinks that you're pressing a keyboard key to operate your emulator or your front end and the Raspberry Pi takes input from the GPIO pins and whenever a ground is connected by actually pressing a button between um, the two parts of the micro switch then it actually takes that low and it recognizes that as a button press which it then transforms into a key press and that's how it actually works so making note of these connections if you're using our image if you simply wire your remaining button connection from each micro switch to the indicated GPIO pin make sure you don't get those up mixed up with the pin numbers the GPIO pins as indicated here then you'll be absolutely fine and this diagram that you see here works for the model pi, uh, model uh, of Raspberry Pi B plus it works for the Raspberry Pi 2 the Raspberry Pi 3 and the A plus it also works for the zero as well the zero has a common connection set up like this so once again that's the Raspberry Pi model B plus Raspberry Pi 2 Raspberry Pi 3 also the A plus and the Raspberry Pi 0 so connect each of those to the corresponding GPIO pin and using our image that bits taken care of and you should be able to copy our image to your SD card boot up your machine and you'll be good to go let's look a little bit further at the sound 
taking a look about one way you could actually get the sound from your Raspberry Pi our image is pre-configured so that the output comes out of the HDMI for the screen however the sound is set to actually come out the 3.5mm jack plug that you can see on the right hand side of the Pi board on the screen now one bit of advice for all builders apart from those using our image because it's already done is in order to reduce interference and give you a clearer sound, a crisper sound, set your Raspberry Pi volume output to roughly about 50% and then the same with your amplifier. Usually you find you've got a volume pot like you can see here which is normally got uh, a white pot on there with a slot in it for a screwdriver, straight bladed screwdriver and the configuration you can see here is typical uh, of what's used in one of our kits. We have uh, usually a 3 inch or a 5 inch arcade speaker with the positive and negative marked on the terminals. Uh, but coming in we've of course got a stereo jack plug here. So we take our two stereo outputs and combine them to one. And we take our common or our negative, leave that as it is, and we connect that to the input side of the amp. Now usually it's marked as in, positive in, negative in, and we've also got our power to our amp that you can remember from the previous slide, with the negative and VCC indicating the positive. On the output side, we've got a plus out and minus out. It's very important that we make sure that we've got them connected to our speaker correctly, as indicated on the speaker terminals. So in this layout, we're looking at going from the stereo output of the Raspberry Pi to the single speaker of a mini arcade system via an amp. You can of course adjust your volume via the pot that you can see there and as I said before our image is pre-configured to have the volume set at halfway so you can just tweak it and reduce interference here at the volume and it sounds fine, it sounds fine. Alternatively we could actually be using a stereo amplifier which is designed for two speakers but we can use it with the Pi with only one speaker. This time we take our left, our right and our common signals from our Pi 3.5mm connection plug and we bring it in via in and in for left and right and our common, our negative coming in directly from that as you can see there from that wire there. Now in terms of the pin it's actually the end of the connector, the very end which should be connected to common and you'll see the two segregated areas as you move up the 3.5mm plug you can see them separated out and we've got left, we've got right and then we've got common at the very bottom at the tip. Again we have power coming in and in this case what we're doing is combining our separate left and right out into one positive signal to go to our positive on our speaker and we're taking our common through the amp to our negative on our speaker so this setup uses an actual stereo amp rather than a mono amp found on the previous slide both of which will operate fine it won't damage your amp all we're doing is combining the output signal into one speaker Alternatively, if you wanted to add two speakers to your system, we can do that. And in the same way as the last slide, we're connecting the left and right output to the appropriate input connections from our Pi here. Again, carrying through our common. Again, with power fed from our first slide. We've got a volume pot still, of course. That could alternatively be a volume knob, depending on the amplifier that you choose. You should be making sure you choose a 5 volt amplifier and that should be connected directly to the power connection coming in from the outside of the cabinet as seen on slide number 1. In terms of output, we've got separate positive outputs to each speaker that you can see here and here and we've got a common negative. So you can actually loop those around if you wanted to, negative to negative and have one single wire coming back to the amp as a common depending on where your speakers are located depends on what you might want to actually do the final thing to do is to connect your screen via your uh, driver board on the HDMI connection and we use a standard HDMI cable for that 
you might want to look for a very short HDMI cable they are available you'll find them commonly on eBay um, RS will supply one as well but they're quite expensive eBay is probably a good bet look at the lens because you only need quite a short one because your Raspberry Pi will be mounted on the rear door panel that should cover all your connections the only remaining bit you need is to configure your software image if you bought one of our kits you can contact me directly uh, via eBay arcade underscore flat underscore pack and I can send you a link to our custom image that's pre-configured for this if you're actually configuring it yourself and you haven't bought one of our kits then you'll need to look further and research on the net about how you actually configure it thank you for watching I hope that's helped a few people out remember if you buy one of our kits from eBay you can actually get a link to the image by contacting us through eBay or alternatively you can contact marknutter101 at hotmail.com the image is only available to people who have purchased our kits you can buy any of our kits and get our image so you could go for the two player joystick kit for Pi you could go for any of our mini arcade kits or of course our larger two player full size screen version of our kits as well thank you for watching if you want to see more videos to do with connections assembly and building arcade cabinets please like and subscribe if you've got any questions you can ask them on the video or you can contact me directly thank you for watching and thank you for your time